go, the Downward Facing Spiritual Spiral Podcast. I am thrilled you're here today. Got a lot of energy tonight, so I'm, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. But thrilled you're here, thrilled you're listening. Um, appreciate you taking the time to listen to the show. I've got a lot. I actually, I got a lot of cool stuff to talk about tonight. And so I'm thrilled that you're here today. I think it's going to be really beneficial for you to listen to the show. So I will, I'll make the most, I'll make the most of your time. I promise. By the way, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. You know, my ankle's still probably like 75% there, still limping, still can't run, jump. This, this broken ankle of mine is, it's, I've never broken an ankle before. This is much worse than I could have ever imagined. I think the problem is that I also tore some ligaments, tendons. So anyway, this has just been, it's been a challenging Six weeks dealing with this, to be to be completely honest. I'm a very active guy. So it's been challenging to, you know, just sort of sit around and read. I, I mean, I enjoy reading or watching Silicon Valley on HBO, but it's it's just been a big adjustment. But hopefully I get the sense I'm I'm on my way to being back to quote unquote normal. So I'm gonna talk about music. Phoebe Bridgers on SNL. I'm also going to briefly talk about health at the very end of the show. I'm going to talk about music and artistry and influence. I'm going to try and put this all together. Just to give you a little backstory, I'm a huge Nirvana, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains fan. I've also been listening to the Mark Maron podcast, and he was speaking to Mike Campbell, who's with who played with Tom Petty. And they were talking about influences. You know, in, in the Chris Cornell biography that I just finished reading, by, which I highly recommend by uh, Corbin Reef. You know, Chris and then Mike Campbell on the podcast, they talk about who influenced them. From the Ramones, the Sex Pistols, um, Johnny Cash. And it, it's funny, but it's it's like social media and Instagram have diminished everything in our lives. You know, they, they talk about Instagram has stories that you can post. And there are these sort of 24-hour posts that you can post on Instagram. But I think they're so clever because, they're you know, stories require somebody talking and sharing a story about their past that hopefully is is memorable, that, that you remember, that you remember for the rest of your life, that you maybe pass on and carry on to somebody else. And I can't, to be honest, I don't remember anybody's stories that they post. Stories on Instagram are not memorable. And all these social media conglomerates, they talk about, you know, the DMs, the messaging is conversations. They're not conversations. Conversations, as a reminder, require uh, actual talking and listening. And, you know, the, the society that we live in now is also sort of brings up this word influencers a lot. Instagram influencers, social media influencers, the media being so influential. And I remember when artists were the most influential forces, beings in the world. Like, they took the risks. Everybody wanted to be like Bono, or people wanted to play the guitar like Eddie Van Halen, or people wanted to play the piano like Tori Amos. They, they influenced millions of kids to, I feel like, be renegades, to be rebels, to think for themselves, to take chances. And now influencers are like Cardi B, and I don't know, somebody who's influencing you to go buy some makeup or some kombucha or some tea on Instagram. It's sort of watered down the power of artistry. And, and I think about this a lot. I think about, especially since I'm recording an album right now and I'm almost finished, and I think about how much Chris Cornell and Soundgarden inspired me and Kurt Cobain inspired me. I mean, I've spent years playing music because I was really moved by the way Kurt sung and played guitar. And it's, it's not about being a virtuoso on these instruments. It's about being able to emote some sort of emotion that feels real 
And there's something about the way Chris Cornell sings, something about the way Kurt Cobain sings, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, the way he played guitar. I mean, these people um, are icons. And I think, who, who is an icon that's, that's come out in the last five, ten years musically? And then I think to myself, can they survive in this world of tech and social media? I feel like everybody's so distracted by the bullshit of Instagram and tech and social media and the media that artists don't have that power anymore. People don't pay for art. I mean, are you listening to your music on Spotify or iTunes? Are you listening while you're reading or watching a show on television? There was an article that just came out on the LA Times about a week or two ago talking about we have to get back to listening to records again from beginning to end. Not just like one song, but there's a reason, you know, one song is placed here on a record. Like, okay, computer, there's a reason why Airbag is first and Paranoid Android is second and Subterranean Homesick Alien is third. I mean, there's thought into this, into the record. And and the artists are thinking, oh, this song feels good after this one. And we have to somehow rewind. We have to, we have to appreciate this process of art. And, and I think it's only getting worse. I mean, now movies are basically being released on HBO Max. I know Little Things was just released. I think it's called Little Things with Denzel Washington and Jared Leto and Rami Malek. And it was, it was mediocre at best. I mean, Jared Leto or Leto was, was pretty good, but it was so, who cares? I, I just think the quality of art when it's at this high level it moves the culture. It shifts the culture. It gets people talking and thinking. And so this article in the LA Times, it's called The Lost Art of Deep Listening. Choose an album, lose the phone, close your eyes. I'll just read a quick excerpt here. What's your favorite album? When was the last time you listened? Actually listened to it from start to finish with intention, like you were watching a movie or reading a book. Clear your schedule for the next three hours. Choose three full albums, whether from your collection or your streaming service of choice. Put them in an ordered queue as though you were programming a triple feature. Musicians spend years making their albums. They struggle over syllables, melodies, bridges, and rhythms with the same intensity with which you compare notes on the Forensic Files reboot. But most of us are half-assed when it comes to listening to albums. We put on artists' work while we're scrolling through Twitter, disinfecting doorknobs, obsessively washing our hands, or romancing lovers permitted within our COVID-free zones. So please, please try listening to music over the next two weeks without distraction. And so I say all of this so I can talk about the Phoebe Bridgers on SNL. Which, compl- which blows my mind for so many reasons. So if you don't know the story, Phoebe Bridgers, look her up on Spotify. I was thinking about playing a clip from, the, from YouTube, but I'm not going to bother. Type in her name. You'll see it. She, perform- she performed on SNL last week. And she ends up smashing her acoustic guitar at the end of her song. So let's just backtrack. Let me try and make sense of this all. First of all, just to give you a little perspective, her music, it's not like over-the-top rock. It's not like Courtney Barnett or Janis Joplin. She's like this really sort of sweet, acoustic, like almost like James Taylor. I mean, it doesn't sound anything like James Taylor, but it's very acoustic-y, Lilith Fair, mellow-type music. So she's playing this mellow song on, on SNL, and 
towards the very end, it just out of nowhere becomes this sort of crazy garage, over the top, I guess, rock song, but it, it, none of her music is this way. So I don't know if the original version is this way. I'm not sure. But then suddenly she just starts screaming, belting. Actually, here, I, I gotta, I'm going to play it for you. I got to find it. So here's sort of like the beginning of the song. You know, it's very mellow, very acoustic, chill. And then I'll fast forward a little bit. You know, she's got a pretty voice, very chill. We're about a minute, 30 seconds into the song, you know. And then here we go. It kind of kind of amps up a little bit. Yeah, so she's, you know, she's kind of rocking out a little bit in the Phoebe Bridgers sort of Lilith Fair way that she rocks out. So, and then, you know, we're like... And then all of a sudden... She's like going to town and rocking out. And then... Wait, hold on. You got to hear this. She's jamming, and then she, here she goes. She just suddenly starts screaming. Okay, so it's at this point when she, she starts smashing her acoustic guitar on the uh, monitor on stage. Here's the, here's the issue. So people are pissed off that she, you know, smashed this perfectly fine guitar and then people out there, the, the politically correct people will say, oh, well, you know, if, if she were a man like Kurt Cobain or Pete Townsend, I guarantee you people wouldn't be complaining about her smashing a, a guitar. And then what's crazy is that like David Crosby from Crosby, Stills and Nash starts tweeting at her saying that she's being disrespectful. And then she writes back and is calling him a bitch. And <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. This is what's going on. We're losing sight of something here. First of all, art and the power of music, you know, you're so caught up in the, in the moment that sometimes you do uncontrollable things because you're so in, engrossed in the music. You could cry, you could scream, you could dance. Phoebe Bridgers, while she's playing the song, she's like smiling and, and smiling to the crowd and and then to make things even worse, she actually calls the guitar company the week before asking permission if it's okay for her to smash her guitar. Can you get any more unartistic than that? And so she's, it's, it's almost like we're in a world now where unless you're yelling or screaming or smashing a guitar for no reason, Nobody gives a fuck about what you're doing. This is not about her being a woman. This is not about men can smash their guitar and women can't. Because I tell you, if Janis Joplin smashed her fucking guitar when she played, or Courtney Barnett does when she plays these wild rock songs, it would feel authentic. It would feel real. It wouldn't feel contrived like Phoebe Bridgers is doing on SNL. To think she's calling the guitar company to ask permission. Do you think Kurt Cobain is asking Gibson Guitars when he was alive, hey, I'm going to smash your guitar on Saturday. Is it okay if I do that? No fucking way. Do you think Jimi Hendrix, when he decides to put lighter fluid on his guitar and decides to burn it, if he's asking his company where he gets the guitar from Gibson, if, if it's okay that he burns his guitar? Tori Amos was so caught up in the sexuality of her music that a lot of times she was dry humping her piano and dry humping her piano bench when she played live. Do you think she's asking the piano company, hey, I'm going to dry hump you, you know, your piano. Is that okay? Like we have turned into a bunch of wussies. Artists aren't cool. Art, artists aren't cool anymore. 
It's like we are so caught up in being politically correct. We're so entranced by technology. We're so caught up in getting your attention that it's all watered down and contrived bullshit. It, like, Phoebe should be embarrassed. Like, and we should be embarrassed. Like, it's a pretty, it's a good song. It's like this pretty nice song. And the only reason people are talking about her is because she does this contrived bullshit where she smashes her guitar at the end of the song. My last point here, it's just, it's a little medical story, but I felt like I had to share this for you before I let you go. You know, I'm really into my health. I went to the doctor last week for a physical. I, you know, had all this blood work. I had my blood pressure taken. And the nurse says that my blood pressure is totally normal. And so the doctor comes in to see me. And he says, boy, you know, your, your, your blood pressure is rising. You're, you're, you're close to being hypertensive. And I said, well, what are you talking about? The nurse just said that my, my blood pressure was fine. And he said, well, you know, the AMA is changing their numbers. And over the last few years, they've lowered the classification. So now you're actually a little bit closer to being considered hypertensive. And so I said, well, what does that mean? What, what do I do? He goes, well, you know, we'll, we'll put you on these... Um, ACE inhibitors, and that'll help lower your blood pressure. And, and you know, this is just precautionary, but this way we can, um, you know, take advantage, we can help you out beforehand, you know, or we could, we could, this way we can give you something to help you lower your blood, blood pressure. And I go, well, are there side effects or, you know, this, this, this seems a little weird to me. It's, it almost feels like the, it's a, another reason for, or another way to get people to take pharmaceutical drugs. He goes, no, these are, you know, it's a cheap medication. It's generic. And I go, well, are there any side effects? He goes, no, not really. And I said, I'm sorry, doctor, but this just sounds a little odd to me. Like all these years, the American Medical Association just suddenly decides to lower the number of what determines high blood pressure. So now you're telling me that I'm actually close to being hypertensive and now I should start thinking about taking a medication. And he says, yeah, doesn't that sound a little strange? I feel like there's these medical conditions out there like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, where if you're not lazy and if you're motivated through diet and exercise, you can lower your li- you can lower your high blood pressure lower your cholesterol levels and be okay and in these pharmaceutical companies are taking advantage of people's lazy tendencies cuz it's much easier to just take a pill than it is to exercise 5 6 days a week it's it's certainly much cheaper to take a pill than eat healthfully it's so freaking expensive. Like one little basket of organic raspberries costs $5, which is, which is insane. It, it, just, it feels like another example where the pharmaceutical companies are trying to suck you in to start taking medication. I was just reading this piece where I was, I was reading about a journalist, and the journalist was saying, the most important thing in my profession, what I like to do is ask questions. So I want you to ask yourself some questions this week. Do you take the easy way out? If a doctor tells you to just take a pill to lower your blood pressure, do you say yes? Or do you ask questions and think about healthier alternatives than to take a pill? And then when you listen to music or watch a movie, are you listening to the music with no distraction? Or are you want and, and you know when you're watching a movie, are you watching the movie with no distraction? Or do you Watch the movie, you know, with your phone in one hand, your laptop to the left of you. Are you fully engaged in the music that you're listening to and the movie that you're watching? Or are you multitasking, doing like five things at once? We have to stop multitasking. We must listen to music with no distraction. Play a record this week with no distraction. I'm going to end today's show with a new song that I just put out. 
It's 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 more of like a it's more of a dance song. There's no vocals on it, but it's called Verses. I I think after spending a few years DJing in Los Angeles, I wanted to try my hand at producing a more sort of electronic dance song. So we're going to end the show with a new song that I just put out on Spotify, iTunes. It's on my Bandcamp page, eddiecone.bandcamp.com. Just put it out a few weeks ago, so check it out. Again, it's called Verses. You can find me at iameddiecone.com. Any questions, find me on Instagram or Twitter at eddiecone. And you know what's really helpful? If you head over to iTunes and write a review for the show, ideally a five-star review, but give it a review. Tell, Tell me what you think about it. And share the show with your friends. And also tell your friends, try to get your friends to listen to an album with no distractions. Go listen to OK Computer, which is like my favorite record of all time. I want you to go listen to it with no distractions this week. Message me on Instagram and tell me what you think about the song. So that is it. Again, I'm ending today's show with my new single, Verses, which is on Spotify and everywhere. And that's it. Thank you so much for listening and being a part of the Downward Facing Spiritual Spiral podcast.